maisha haya ninapita tu hali ya sasa ni kwa muda tu shindi wangu ukarib nami sitatezi wangu you hai sitabaki kama nilivyo sitabaki kama nilivyo sitabaki kama nilivyo sitabaki kama nilivyo silalamiki wala sikufuru najua ni darasa napitishwa imani yangu ipo kwenye kipimo najua nitapita tu sitamari ya wengine wala sijilinganishi najua wakati wangu upo Siyoko pesi na mapito Ninayo ya pitia Na mamini yule Aliruhusu nipite Sitabaki kama Nilio Sitabaki kama Sitabaki kama Nilio Sitabaki kama Sitabaki kama Amen. Good morning church. Good morning. Are you well today? It's lovely to see you guys from up here. I'd request us to be upstanding. I'll give you a chance to say hi to your neighbor in a few. Yeah, but I'd like to read from Okay.
Okay. I can see we are, we've said that to each other. So I'm going to read from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 12. And the Bible says that, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, by this man, the Bible is referring to Jesus Christ. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Amen. Amen. I want us to go into a session of worship and just and, and just adore Jesus for who he is. He came down, he redeemed our souls and he ascended to heaven and is sitting at the right hand of the Father. So this morning, just in your own words, just worship him. Just glorify his name. Just tell him thank you for the gift of life, for his grace, for his forgiveness, for his mercies that are new every morning. You are holy, holy, you are holy. You are holy. Lamb of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, you are holy, holy, you are holy. Lamb of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, you are holy, holy. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy, holy, you are holy, yes, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, Lamb of God, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, you God. Lamb of God, you are seated. 
we we serve a faithful God. Jesus is faithful. And this morning, I just want us to focus our sh to shift our focus to Him and Him alone. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us day and night. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, dealing with our situations. I don't know how you came in today. I know we are at different places in our lives. Where I'm at is not where you are at. But we serve one God. And He is dealing with our situations as they are. He's faithful. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Alpha and Omega, the all and the perfecter of our faith. And this morning, God, we just worship you. And we just exalt you. And we lift our hands and our voices to you, God. That you will be exalted in this place. That you will be exalted in our life. That you will be exalted in this nation and in all that we are, oh God. We join the 24 elders in saying that you are holy and worthy is your name, oh God. We worship you. for the Lord. Amen. We are going to a session of praise and we are just telling God that he should reign in our lives and that there is no one else like him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Buona sifiwe. Mwachi Yesu atawale Atawale, atawale Mwachi Yesu atawale Atawale, atawale Mwachi Yesu atawale Atawale, atawale Mwachi Yesu Come and rain, Lord. Come and rain. For the glory is yours. Come and rain, Lord. Come and rain, Lord. Come and rain. For the glory is yours. Come and rain. Come and rain, Lord. Come and rain, Lord. For the glory is yours. Come and rain, Lord. Come and rain, Lord. Come and rain. Salama, 
Wamilele, wamilele, mungu wa baraka ni Yesu Wamilele, wamilele, mungu wa baraka ni Yesu Wanema, wanema, mungu wa nema ni Yesu Wamilele, wamilele, mungu wa baraka ni Yesu Mungu wa nema, mungu wa mapendo Mungu wa salama, mungu wa mapendo Mungu wa uweto Hakuna mungu kama wewe buwana Hakuna mungu kama wewe rafa Wabaraka Wabaraka
wow. In his presence, this fullness of joy. Amen. Amen. We are going to go into a session of worship. And like I said, as we are beginning the service, our focus should only be on Jesus. Today we are just calling on him and telling him confidently that we know who he is in our lives. Okay? Just prepare your heart for worship, really. Avoid any distractions and just focus on him. And what is in your heart today, just let it out to him. The benches here are free during worship. You can come, kneel down and just give your needs or your gratitude to God. You are here Moving in the midst I worship you I worship you You are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you You are here Moving in the midst I worship you I worship you Let's sing together You are here Walking in this place I worship you I worship you. I worship you. Sing, you are here. You're moving, moving in love. I worship. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Lord, you are here. You're working, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We know you are the way maker, miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are healer, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you. Lord, you are healed. You are healed. Amen. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, Lord, you are here, you are here. you're touching every heart, touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, yes, you are here, you are here. you're here. I worship you. I worship you. Say, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you. That is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let us just confess it, he is the way maker. Way maker, miracle up, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the way maker. Miracle up. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, and that is who you are. 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 That is who you are.
Yes, church, we serve a faithful God. The word tells us to come boldly to the throne to obtain grace and mercy. And this morning, boldly and with confidence, just tell him that you know that he is the way maker, the God who makes ways in the desert, rivers in the desert. God who makes a way where there seems to be no way. That is the God we serve. God who performs miracles in situations that we cannot understand in our human knowledge. He told us that his promises are yes and amen. And this morning we call you God the promise keeper. Yes, you are. And we put our trust in you God. Our lives are not our own, but yours, oh God. We bring our situations to you this morning. You can see our hearts, you know, our minds, God. And our confidence is in you. And we surrender everything to you, God. We surrender all that we are to you, God. Because you've told us, God, to call upon you and you will hear us and you will answer us, oh God. And this morning we are calling on you, God. Every soul in this place is calling upon you, God. We pray that you meet us, oh God. We surrender all to you.
are blessed to be in God's house this morning and we get a chance not just to sing that we surrender but to actually surrender to our Father. And I'd like to invite us to a time of prayer and I encourage you to surrender all to God this morning. You are in your Father's house, you're in the house of the one who made you and who loves you and your time is now that whatever it is that is on your heart, be it good, be it bad, be it thanks, be it praise, be it a cry for help, a need. This is our time now to surrender and I welcome you to the altar, to the kneeling benches, to just surrender unto the Lord the needs that are on our hearts. We know what we brought us to church this morning and my prayer is that you do not leave with it, do not leave with that burden, but leave it at your Father's feet. So we'll just take some time in prayer and then I shall conclude our time together. Father, we come to you because we can turn to no one else, oh God. We come to you, the one who formed us, the one who made us, and the one who loves us, oh God. Help us to surrender. Please take our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh this morning that we may surrender, oh God. May we not hold on in pride. May we not hold on, oh God, thinking that we can do it all on our own, oh God. Because we can do nothing without you, O oh God. Anything that we are doing in our lives, O oh God, to glorify ourselves, we repent and ask that you, God, because all the glory belongs to you alone, O oh God. In what we do, in how good we look, O oh God, in how well we perform, O oh God, in how wealthy we are, in how good our health is, O oh God, you deserve the glory. You and you alone, O oh God. I pray, would you help us to surrender our pride this morning, O oh God. I pray, would you move in our hearts this morning, Holy Spirit. Would you move in our hearts this morning, you're calling us to different things this day. You're calling us to repentance. You're calling us to ask for help. You're calling us to ask for your provision. You're calling us today to ask to depend on you, O oh God. So would you help us to surrender our will unto you, Jehovah? I pray help us to learn how to ask, O oh God. Help us to learn how to depend on you, O oh God. Help us to learn to live in the vine. Help us to learn to live, O oh God, meditating on your word day and night, that we may not walk in our own wisdom, O oh God, but in your wisdom, O oh God. Help us to walk knowing that the Spirit is in us, the Spirit who is our ever-present help, counsel, and comforter, oh God. I thank you because you call us to live differently, oh God. And help us to live the way you've called us to live, oh God. This morning as we present ourselves before you, we bring our hearts and ask, oh God, forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of all our sin, O oh God. Have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy upon us, for we are wicked creatures, O oh God. You know the wickedness of our hearts, and I pray, would you have mercy and forgive us as we seek you in repentance today, Father. We walk around and only see what is on the outside, but you would see what is in the hearts of men, O oh God. And I pray that each of us would come before you and repent of our sin, because none of us is without sin, O oh God. I pray forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of all our trespasses, O oh God. I pray, Holy Spirit, would you move among us and would you just turn our hearts to you? Would you turn our hearts to seek you, O oh God? I pray, would you move in a mighty way this morning as we bring different needs before you, O oh God? We have so many needs, O oh God. 
and the needs of man are never satisfied. But I thank you because we have a father who does not lack and will never lack in the name of Jesus. I thank you God because your pockets will never run dry, oh God. Because your healing will never end, oh God. Because your provision will never end, oh God. Your mercy, your forgiveness, your faithfulness, they will never end. And we come and ask again. Even though we asked this morning, we asked yesterday, we asked last week, we ask again. Because you ask us to, oh God. And so I pray, help us to continue trusting in you as we wait on your response, oh God. Help us to trust you. To trust you to provide for our needs, for our families, for our businesses, for our education, oh God. Help us to trust you for our health and our healing in the name of Jesus. I pray help us to trust you, oh God, for our own salvation. That we would walk in you in the fear of you, oh God. I pray help us to trust you, oh God, for our nation, oh God. For the church of Jesus Christ this day and until your return, oh God. Help us to trust you, oh God. Help us to trust you, O oh God, where we see no other way, where we have reached our end, and that is exactly where you want us to be, in the place where we are dependent on you, O oh God. And I pray, would we trust you, O oh God, with all our hearts, with all our minds, with everything that we own and love and hold dear, would we just open up our hands and give it to you and say, O oh God, all these gifts you have blessed me with are yours, and I give them back to you, and I trust that you will see me through, O oh God. I pray that you would help us to walk free of anxiety and free of stress, oh God, because we can be so bothered in this life. But here and now, in our Father's house, we do not need to be anything to anyone, oh God, but to be your children, just to behold you, just to worship you, just to sit at your feet, just to listen to your word, and oh God, you remind us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness that all other things will be added unto us. We cannot add anything in our lives by worrying, oh God. I pray would you help us to release our worries and cares unto you. No matter how big or small they seem, I know you are a near father, you are a dear father, you are a loving God and you take care of each of us as though we were the birds of the air. And so this morning, we put our trust in you, God. For everything that we have opened our mouths and shared with you in prayer or silently cried from our hearts. We trust you, O oh God. We trust you, O oh God. We don't trust in men, but we trust in you, O oh God. And I know you are faithful to accomplish that which you have begun in us, O oh God. So I pray, would we walk surrendered lives? We would not just sing the song, but would we live it, oh God? That we surrender to you all that we need, all that we are, all that we are trusting you for, oh God. Help us to walk this journey of faith, oh God. To live it loudly, oh God. To live it with our heads held high, that we are people who believe in you, Lord Jesus Christ. That as we call ourselves Christians, may we actually be Christians, oh God. May we love like you. May we love you and may we love your people, oh God. I just invite your presence here, oh God, to be with us in this your sanctuary this morning. To minister to us, oh God. To bless us, to comfort us, to heal us, to guide us, oh God. We need you this morning. And I pray may we leave this sanctuary transformed. I pray would you bless this community here, this church community, oh God. Would we truly love one another and serve you with all our hearts and with all our gifts, O oh God. We bless your name, O oh God, and we trust you, O oh God, to minister to us as we sit today in your sanctuary, O oh God. Please glorify yourself, O oh God. Exalt yourself in all that we do here. For this I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord, you may be seated. Welcome to church, welcome to church. Karibuni sana. Well, welcome to the Lord's house. Karibuni sana, those who are coming in, you're welcome. God is good, church. God is good. And all the time. Amen. 
I pray you actually believe that God is good and that God has been good in your life today and this week. Welcome to church. My name is Pastor Maureen and I'd like to welcome those who are with us for the first time. Do we have any visitors in the house or joining us online? Are you here in church for the first time or are you here after a long absence? We'd like to recognize you and welcome you into the house of the Lord and I'd like to ask that you stand where you are so that we can recognize you and appreciate you. Do we have any visitors in the house? Please turn to the person next to you and ask them, are you new to church today? <laughs> do we have any visitors upstairs? We do. Oh, praise the Lord. You're welcome to church, my brother. It's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, receive a card from the ashes just to get your information. And you're most welcome to, serve, to worship with us today. I'll pray for you as I pray for the children. So I'll ask the children to please come forward so that you can go to Sunday school. All the children, please come to the kneeling benches so that we can pray as we go to Sunday school. You're welcome to your father's house. Come children. Let us come and get ready to go to Sunday school. I love how you're all so warmly dressed. Parents, you've done a good job. We know it's cold. Thank you for bringing them to the Lord's house in spite of the weather. Okay, these are the people who will pray for us. Let's wait for everyone to come. Just come, we're waiting for you. Welcome. Okay, all our children are here. And I'm going to ask these to pray for us. Let's start from here. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day. Bless us. As we go to Sunday school. Jesus, we pray, amen. Let me be together. Let's pray. Okay, for our masters, give people who are sick, but be okay, that is sleep at your name. Amen. My name is Vanessa. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. We tell the people who are sick, if, if they are still in hospital, we bring them back home. We do not die in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I come this day. Thank you for the daily bread you have given us, O oh Lord, mighty God. Thank you for giving us time, O oh Lord. Thank you for giving us this day. People who have not seen this day, O oh Lord, give, give, give the whole man to see this day. My Father, O oh Lord, give them pleasures and blessings, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you. People who are in the hospital, O oh Lord. People who are in the streets, O oh Lord. May you oh, always protect them and guide us and guide them, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I believe. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Jersey. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for the day you've given us. I pray for the people that are sick. Please hear them. I pray for us as we go for Sunday school. Please guide us. I pray for the people that are sick. And the people that are in the hospital, the people don't, that don't have food, shelter, money. Please give them. Please heal us and also you, you are the one who guides our way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Our Lord, bless. Our Lord, thank you for this day. 
Thank you for gift of life. Bless our dad and ma. Bless our sisters and brothers and friends. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good day. Thank you, children. You can go for Sunday school. God bless you all and God bless your teachers. It's now time for our announcements. about offering support do you have a heart to help others are you passionate about offering support and guidance to those facing challenges our church is seeking individuals who share this passion to join our counseling team we are looking for people who are able to listen actively and understand the needs of others willing to offer support and guidance without judgment dedicate time and energy to serving others prior experience in counseling is not required we will provide comprehensive training to equip you with the skills and knowledge needed to offer effective support. If you are interested in joining our counseling team and making a positive impact in the lives of others, please sign up with one of our ushers after service today or call the church office on 0723330705. We look forward to welcoming you to our team. Be Better by Leroy Foundation. We invite you to join this discussion on how to Better understand neuro disabilities in children. Better support children with neuro disabilities. The target group is team ministry volunteers, support teachers, caregivers, and anyone interested in better understanding and supporting children with neuro disabilities. This will happen on June 22nd, 2024, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Good Shepherd, AGC and Gong Road. Please sign up with the Yoshas. This event is sponsored by the Leroy Bones Foundation. Contact 0722978545 for more information. We want to extend a heartfelt invitation to our dear widows and widowers multipurpose hall. This evening is a celebration of your strength and resilience. We gather to offer encouragement, share hope and build lasting connections. We see you, we acknowledge you and we want you to know that you belong. Please join us for a delicious meal, warm fellowship and a chance to connect with your church family. RSVP to 72 so we can ensure enough seating and food for everyone. We are honored to have Rhoda Kyuko and Pastor Simon Mongi as our guest speakers for the evening. The dress code is smart casual. Please note that it's free and you can invite your loved ones, mom or dad for example. We look our church dance team as we prepare for the upcoming worship experience. Practices begin this Sunday 16th June 2024 here at Goody. Please come with clothes you can dance in. We start at 2.30 p.m. and end by 5.30 p.m. Get in touch with Julie Mungai on 0735-993404 if you want to join. Ages are 15 years and above. See you there. It's only appropriate that we actually see them live. So as we prepare to give, I'll call the ushers. Okay, uh, ushers please, and allow me to pray for our giving. Father, we thank you for the gifts that you have blessed us with, and I pray would you receive back our offerings and tithes unto you. Would you remember what we give to you? Would you bless it, and would you increase it for the glory of your name? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Under the blood, under the blood, me me under the blood. Jesus, you may cover me under the blood. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. How when me feel like me, I go break up. Put the blood on me face just like a makeup. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. How when me feel like me heart break up. Put the blood on me face just like a makeup. Under the blood. Under the blood, Jesus cover me. Jesus, you will cover me. Under the blood. 
As I get down to you, give me direct You know me, you tell me where I'm from there My bad, thank you Therefore, I love you, you love me today Heaven is on you, the shower I'm ready I got to you, show me the way My bad, thank you Takin marafiki plastic kwa kai mimi na kiondo mimi ni mchuzi ndo maana hii ni kiondo nina utoto nafa kupele kwa chanjo daktari kwa Michael Speed anasema sonjo kwa streets na hizo hills na hips bonoko kawe ndo unasanya tenje unapeleka soko kwa form tu na unapora mamokoro walai unahitaji mangoto when you go come super sana jo achana na ndom hizo tap tap ninacho malenga your form hizo kombe Anymore you are my energy watch on the throne Kill a Friday, you getting a text Kill a D, was there a married day And you are like your baby mother, you are not a day This is your crazy, check it Super juice, you are talking about you Nani ya likuwa na shop, you are going to get it All expense paid, you are going to get it You are going to get it, you are going to get it You are going to get it, you are going to get it You are going to get it, you are going to get it You are going to get it, you are going to get it You are going to get it, you are going to get it You are going to get it, you are going to get it You are going to get it, you are going to get it Ina choma lenga yo form, hizo kombe One more time And those are the ones who are opening the invitation If you love to dance, no matter how old or young you are You're welcome to join them, to dance You can see it's fun, we are praising God And we can't wait to get to heaven to dance with you Okay um, allow me to ask Reverend Bones, please, could you introduce the speaker of the day? You're the best person to introduce the speaker of the day. So let's appreciate Reverend Bones. And Mrs. Bones. Let's appreciate the both of them. Well, as fear. Yeah, they, if they had said those who are 50, I would have joined up to dance. But they said 90, so I think it is the opportunities for others. I'd like to introduce the speaker of today. I've known her for over 20 years. Yeah, and it's my pleasure to pray over my wife as she brings the word of the Lord today. I think she'll introduce uh, her family more. Let us pray. Father, we thank you every time that we get to have instruction from your word. We are but just vessels. But your word is truth, your word is life, uh, and you have a word in season for us. I want to thank you for my wife, Edith. I thank you for the uh, deposit of your word in her life. And as she um, expresses it through the sermon today, I just want to pray a blessing over her. Uh, may your anointing... Uh, cover her, and may you open our hearts and ears to really, really hear from you. Help us also to be doers of this word, not just hear us, and to walk in obedience to the things that you're calling us to do. We bless you for this service, and we pray for this time of instruction. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord, church. Good morning this cold morning. It's good to see all of us who have braved this cold morning. I know most of the time when, when it's cold, some people feel like I can do a bedside Baptist, yeah? They stay in bed. So those of us who are here, we thank God for you. So just greet one another. You know, I think that is a way of the preacher to prepare themselves and say, welcome this cold morning to church. So, as you've heard, my name is Edith Bones, and yes, I'm a pastor's wife. I am a mother of five. Um, I'm also uh, employed as a, in a government agency, and recently I have acquired a, a new passion, and that is to champion for the rights of children with developmental disabilities, like autism. And... Uh, why I'm here today, I want to make a few comments even before I start. As you've heard, I'm a pastor's wife. And sometimes there's that expectation as a pastor's wife that one needs to be, maybe once in a while to preach. Is there that expectation? Oh, there is? Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. As, but I want to make a few comments even before I start. When we were dating with my husband, and my, then, my now husband, then boyfriend, and I knew he was going to be a pastor, 
I asked him, is there going to be any expectation that I will preach? Because I was a young, shy, Christian girl, and I didn't see myself ever, ever standing on the pulpit and sharing the word of God. And he promised me that that expectation would not be there. So that was going to be a deal breaker. So I said yes, <laughs> because I was like, okay, I can be able to deal with people's expectation. At least if he won't expect that from me, I'll be able to deal with other people's expectations. So many years down the line, he has kept his promise. He has never expected me to preach. And I've been able, at least there's been no expectation from the places we have uh, served, at least, and if it was there, maybe it was silent. <laughs> so I'm making this comment so that I just maybe lower your expectations so that if I do, <laughs> if I give a talk rather than a sermon, you will bear with me because I'm not a preacher, all right? I'm not a preacher. And also so that you can encourage me even as I share today because this is not my strong thought. This has come out of a, a passion that I have recently developed. When my friend Jackie is the one who asked me, can you share? Because during this Compassion Month, we are thinking of many things, and one of them is disability. I was like, oh, no. I started thinking of other people that I can give an option. But she challenged me, and I want to thank Jackie because she challenged me to get out of my comfort zone and to be here today. So thank you, Jackie, for challenging me. So yes, so that is why I'm here today. It's because of passion. It's not out of expectation, but I'm, I'm also going to meet some of those expectations today. Maybe it will be a one, a, a one time. But I thank God for this opportunity that he has given me to share his word. And even as I share, let me pray before we begin. And thank you, Reverend Bones had prayed, but let me just pray again. Eh? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, with all humility, I humble myself before you, that you may use me today to just speak your word. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be upon me, and that I speak, as I speak your word, Lord, that it will, it will be truth, and it will be taken uh, as word that uh, can transform lives. I thank you, and I honor you. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. So, today I have titled the message that I want to share, The Week Are Welcome. The weak are welcome. And as I say this, I know we have had, uh, we have seen uh, many places where we have these signs of all are welcome. Even today, we have welcomed visitors here in our, at our gate. There's all are welcome. Sometimes even in our houses, we have those mats that say welcome at the door, right? We have seen those signs. Have we seen those signs in places we have gone? Restaurants, churches, have we seen them? But have you ever gone to a place where you have seen this sign, but when you went and left, you still felt that you were not welcome? Have you ever been? Okay, why? Why did you feel this way? And it was announced that you are welcome. Maybe you went to your in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> and you left, say, I, Apo, Siku Karibishwa, or any other place. Why? Share with your neighbor, 30 seconds, one mark. <laughs> Share, why did you feel that you were not welcome? Anyone willing to share what you thought or what you've had? Anyone? Any? Yes. The, saying the poor services and maybe the poor communication. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? Anything else? All right, so I'm sure from our discussion, we discovered that being welcome is actually an intentional way of an experience, right? A feeling, what you feel after you have encountered uh, somewhere or uh, something. It is, it is not a proclamation or an announcement. And that uh, decision of being welcome is with the, with the guest, not the host. It is not the host will say that I welcome them. It is actually the person who has been uh, invited that will 
will, will confirm that they felt welcome. And I shared some statistics here a while ago in April when we were doing the autism awareness um, month. And I was showing some statistics of some uh, questions that a research I did in our parents forum that I'm in, that I was asking them how they interact with their, with their places of worship. And I just was interested to know, to also see what they say. And uh, the statistics actually showed that more than 50% of families affected with uh, disabilities, and that was really majorly autistic parents, they said that they actually stopped attending service because of the challenge of their children. And some said that they sometimes go, maybe once in a while, I don't know, once a month, once a quarter, I don't know, but they still don't feel comfortable. And some said, I, yeah, I go, but I don't know for those who said, the, the percentage for those who said yes was less than 20%, and I don't know if they meant maybe their places of worship have intentionally thought of them or not. But what am I saying? The churches, most churches say, proclaim that they welcome everybody. But the families affected with this disability are feeling excluded. And that does not mean necessarily Good Shepherd Church. It is our community of faith at large. So I'm not saying Good Shepherd Church. But our community of faith at large have not thought of this Maybe it's a small community. You know, sometimes we think they're not the majority, so why are we making a big deal about them? But we remember Christ is for all, yeah? And even that one is worth. That one. We know that Christ says he left the 99 for the one. So even that one is worth the effort. And I know it is, there's a church leader who said that it's not that we deliberately excluded them. In fact... We weren't deliberate at all. That was the problem. Because we were not deliberate. We have not thought about them. The church is silent. There's maybe so much noise outside, outside there, but the church is silent. And we have been accused as a church so many times of being silent when uh, many things are, are happening. The gospel and kingdom of Christ is about welcoming the weak. We know Christ showed so much compassion, and especially to those who are weak. I want us to look at uh, scripture from the book of uh, uh, Luke chapter 4, from verse 16 to 19. Uh, you'll forgive me because I know as a church you have been in the book of Acts. I was not able to get a scripture from the book of Acts that would go with my, what I wanted to share. So I said, okay, I apologize. But at least Akim uh, encouraged me by saying, you know, the book of Luke, uh, Luke wrote the book of Acts. So I'm not so far off. <laughs> so I was encouraged by that. So uh, because I wanted to really look at uh, Christ as an example of showing compassion, even as we think of compassion um, this month. So from, uh, in the book of uh, Luke chapter 4, from verse 16 to 19, and this is really after Jesus has left the mountain after 40 days of prayer and fasting, and he's now uh, going to start his public ministry. And he goes to, um, uh, to Nazareth, and uh, let's just read the scripture and hear what uh, it says. Luke chapter 4, 16 to 19. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And rolling it, he found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the, for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So Jesus here, this is, he goes to the synagogue and this is, his, he's just going to start his ministry and this is the portion of scripture that he chooses to read. Most scholars suggest that he was actually trying to say his mission. You know, he was trying to say this is the mission 
for my ministry, for my work, the work that I'm going to do, this is my mission. Because he said this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And from this scripture that he reads, we realize that he chooses a scripture that really points out the weak, those who are weak. He talks about the poor, those who have been oppressed, the ones who are in prison, the ones who are disabled like the blind. And he says he has come to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He talks graciously about these people. And we also know that Christ came for us, for us all, right? When he's, he's, he's saying this, he's not trying to say that those who are not in this category are not part of the salvation plan. He's actually trying to speak to a deeper human, brokenness and weakness in humanity because Christ is for us all. So he does not exclude anybody. We are all weak in some places, right? And maybe there are those of us who are weaker than others, but Christ came to, to bring, uh, to show us mercy, all of us, and we all fall into, in, in this category. So he is just, Christ uses, most of the time he uses disability and weakness to show a deeper brokenness, even how he deals with those who are weak in the society. You know, most of the p people who are mentioned here, these are the people that even I, I probably don't want to associate with. When Pastor Nathan was preaching here a, a while ago, he said, we always look at people uh, in a way that, what can I get from them? We never start to think, what can I offer? And this is how Christ wanted us to think. What can I offer? What is it that can, I can offer? Because these are the people who I probably would not want to associate with, right? These are the people who you say, no, I, I mean, they are, they are going to bring a lot of, you know, mess in my life and may, probably you want to keep away from them. The church should be a community, a, welcome, a welcoming community, especially to those who are weak and broken. That is where... The, that is why the church exists. It's not for those who are strong and well. Those who are weak, those are the ones who are supposed to be welcomed in our community. When, when my son was young, and my son is autistic, as I told you, he was, when he was, the period between four and eight is a very, is a very stressful period for, for, for those kids because he's autistic and he's also ADHD, which is hyper. So Sunday was one of my most anxious days. I, I would wonder, okay, what is, how is it going to be today? Should I go to church? Should I stay at home? And I'm privileged because I'm a pastor's wife and there are bit privileges, but I felt like that. There are times I felt like I really actually do not want to go to church. I prefer for him to be at home. So I just think of others, like what, 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 what happens? What happens to them? They, it's a real, you know, we all have our struggles, right? We all have our struggles of why we sometimes we do not attend church. But these are real challenges. They are not just things that we are saying. They are real challenges that families that have been affected experience. I want to suggest um, three areas that we can think about even and embrace even as we think of including those who are weak among us. One of the areas I want us to look at is break the myths. Break the myths. What are some of the myths that we know or we have about disability? They are myths, right? Especially depending on where you come from, maybe re the region. Some people say disabilities are curse or is due to a sin. In rural communities, sometimes even you hear it's, it's out of witchcraft, right? Some people say disability, I mean, feel like disability is shameful. You don't want to be associated with disability. Or people who are, dis who are disabled are not valuable. You, you think that they don't have any value to give. But what are the facts? What are the facts? Disability is God's will. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 11, when Moses was being uh, tasked by God to go and... Uh, and do the work that he was to bring uh, the, the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, he, he complains and he tells God, I f I'm not able, I'm not good in speaking. But in Exodus chapter 4 verse 11, the Lord replies and says to him, the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Let me just sip some water, because I feel my mouth is dry. So we hear that respond. What does that mean? It is God's will, right? It's, it's God who chooses to make us the way we are. 
We are all created in God's image, but he chooses to make us who we are and the way we are. In um, the book of John chapter 9, there is a story of the blind man, man, and Jesus is walking along with his disciple, and this blind man is begging. And uh, in, that, uh, in that story, Jesus heals this blind man. But one of the things that is not recorded is if this blind man actually asked for healing. He probably was not seeing Jesus, right? But Jesus, we see Jesus anticipating his expectation, his expectation, what would be his need. And he actually heals this man, and the man is able to see again. But there's an odd question that arises by the disciples. The disciples ask, who sinned? Is this this man or the parents? And so there's a myth there that probably they believe that it's because of sin, right? But we see also uh, an answer where Jesus answers in verse 3 of John chapter 9 that neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. So for, 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 this is for the glory of God, right? And for the glory of God to be revealed in our life, sometimes it comes with pain, it comes with disappointment, with suffering. How do you expect the glory of God to be revealed in your life if there is no pain and suffering? How will you know that you have faith if your faith is not tried? How will you know that God can heal if you're not sick, right? So for the glory of God to be revealed in our life, there has to be pain, there has to be disappointment, there has to be suffering. There's always that question, if God is good, why is there suffering, right? But we have seen here, he's saying this was for the works of God to be revealed. People with disability are talented, they're gifted. They have, you know, God says all of us in the body of Christ, he has given us a gift. We have something that we can do. And even those ones that you might despise and think, this one has no value. They do have value. The other day I was hearing my son, sometimes he, he says random things, and I was just in the sitting room and he was somewhere, and he was kept on saying, tell the world about Jesus, tell the world about Jesus, tell them, until I went to find out, is he reading somewhere or what? And he was just saying that. And for me, I was convicted to say, is he trying to send a message to us that tell the world about Jesus as actually, because it just came from, from nowhere, right? So those ones also, they have value. The other area I want us to think about is breaking barriers, breaking barriers. And Pastor Maureen, when she was sharing during the VBS, she talked about how Jesus broke many barriers, and, and this is one of them. And disability is even enhanced because of barriers. You know, for us who are typical, we always find our environment, you know, we are able to set our environment the way we, we want. But disability, disabled people have faced so many challenges just because of the way our environment is set up. So we need to think about how, how are we reducing these barriers these people that, uh, that people affected by disability face. And uh, some of the barriers might be internal, even for, for those who are affected, but families affected have their own, you know, internal barriers that they need to overcome, you know? Feelings of shame, feelings of disappointment, feeling of uh, st being stigmatized, you know, they have to overcome that so that they are able to interact with the environment or just even like in our church setting for them to, to overcome that, that I'm going to be judged if I'm, I'm in, a, in a public setup. But there are also physical uh, barriers that are, and I know for physical barriers, we probably know so much about them, yeah? Creating rams, creating spaces where if someone with a wheelchair has, can sit in. And even as a church, we need to think more about that. Are we accessible enough? In our, in our places of worship. But we also have social barriers. And, and, and social barriers are harder to deal with because sometimes we do not even know that they exist, right? We do not know that we are not aware about this lack of awareness, our attitudes, discrimination, yeah? stigma that comes with just uh, seeing or associating with uh, people with disabilities. So we need to think about how 
we can break barriers. What can we do? What can we do to show compassion if we do not break these barriers? Or even if going back to our myths, if we do not deal with our beliefs, I want to go back to, 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 to the beliefs a little bit. Because some of the beliefs that we have actually hinder us from showing, showing compassion. Sometimes we, be, we have believed things for so long until we think they are facts. You know, the way you have been wired, you think that this is a fact. And actually, when you evaluate it, even against the word of God, you realize that this is not a fact, it's a myth. So you need to evaluate your belief. Where is your belief? Why are you believing what you believe? And how is it compared to the word of God for you to be able to show compassion? And the same thing with barriers. How are you, how are you able to to break some barriers? How are you able to support? What, has, what is one thing that you can do to break this barrier? You might not be able to do many things, but are you able to just even invite someone in? Are you able to show support? Actually, during that time, as I shared with you, when I was having difficult, I, God just sent me an angel. I would say it's an angel because they, they offered me support. And I want to give a shout out to my friend, Anne, she was just there for me. I don't know how, but she was always, how can I help you? Oh, Leroy is running. He's here. Can I go? You know, you know he, she was always, and she, didn't, she probably didn't think she was doing much, but for me, just knowing that at least there's someone who can even see when Leroy is running, that he's actually running away and holding for me was enough to know that I have support. So, for us to break these barriers, we need to invite people in. When we see someone, you know, sometimes people don't want to say anything because they don't know what to say, maybe. You don't want to, 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 to offend. But even that not saying anything sometimes creates awkwardness. And you can almost just say, okay, I can see maybe you're struggling. Is there any way I can support you? And even uh, Pastor Nathan talked about this, that... You know, the one that we said, how can you support you? And sometimes when we, we think of offering that support, maybe we avoid asking because we think I'll be asked something that I can't do. But what you can say, what can I help you within my limit? What can I do within my limit? And that is how church is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be just me, myself, and I. I'm comfortable. Okay, I'm done. I have to go home. You don't want to think about anything. And church has more and more become that way. That is just about me. So how do we reduce some of these barriers? I've talked about inviting families in, approaching, offering support. We even see uh, God doing that, offering support to Moses. When Moses was complaining, he said, I'll give you your brother, Aaron. He's going to offer support. Creating an environment that is conducive for those maybe who are physically disabled, Creating a specialized room, there are some churches who have already done that, who have uh, maybe a sensory room, a breakout room, just like the way we have the crash, where some, some children, especially those affected with um, ADHD, are hyper, and sometimes the environment is overwhelming for them, and maybe they just need a place to, to go and, and break off and not be in the common environment. And we do that even for our own children, right? But these children... Most parents are, are keeping off because they know if I, even if I go with my child to church, I'll have to take care of them again. Most of us who have come with our children here are now seated comfortable, right? Listening. But those ones are not able to do that. And that's why they prefer maybe to stay away. I know as a church, there's something we're already doing because we have those who have been affected here. There's something we're already doing. We're not saying we're not doing anything, but we can always do more. We can always do better. We can always be intentional so that someone thinks they, I was thought of. When I went there, they actually thought of me. Another area is bringing hope. Now hope is, is a vision for better days. We all need hope, right? In this world where there's one crisis after another, we can't live without hope. Hope is a need that we all need. We all, it's a need, actually, for all, all of us. People experience a lot of... Those who are going through any form of weakness, they experience a lot of hopelessness. And when you are given a diagnosis like that for your child, you experience a period of almost depression because you are thrown into a confusion, yes? You are like, okay, what is all this about? And you are hearing 
maybe this condition does not have, you know, it's a lifelong condition, and you, you, you go through a grieving pro, uh, pro, uh, period where you just feel like, I don't know, I have lost hope. There's a lot of hopelessness, and uh, as even as we talk about mental health, the parents who are affected uh, by disability go through, uh, are affected, their mental health is affected because they, they feel hopeless, they feel uh, anxious because of the uncertainty that is there, and they need hope, we all need hope, and we know as believers that our, our hope is in Christ, our hope is in Christ, and so for them to come to church and experience that hope, it is what we should think about, how are we also giving hope to those who have been affected? Let's look at uh, Romans chapter 15. From verse 1 to 7. And just hear what Paul says in this scripture about hope. Romans chapter 15, 1 to 7. And uh, verse 13 also. It says, we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good, to build them up, for even Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one vo voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you. In other version, it says, welcome one another just as Christ has welcomed you in order to bring praise to God. May the God of hope feed you, that is in verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse, verse 1 says, we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak. I don't know if you read that part, where do you place yourself? The strong or the weak? Most of the time we tend to place ourselves as the strong. So if you place yourself as the strong, read what it says, what you need to do. So just as the theme of our year says, it's time to act. It's not in our place to be here, to be hearing, and we are not acting. It's time for us to do something. It is not enough to have the right belief, to, to believe the right way is good. But right belief should always lead, lead us to action, to do something. And... Um, Johnny and Friends, and this is a disability uh, ministry, suggests some five areas that uh, we can think about even as a culture change, to just change our mindset as we think of what to do and how to act. We have to move from ignorance, and in our ignorance, put awareness, add awareness. We know what's really this about. And then we, from awareness, then we, we become... We, we get skills on how do we do this. We are empowered as a church on how do we do this. And then now we intentionally care for those who are weak among us and plan for them, intentionally plan for them, and then form friendships with them. Form friendships so that they, they become part of our fellowship. And then we move from just them being an object of service to actually them being part of us. Because as we said, we are all gifted. They also can participate even in, uh, in ministry. I want to close with, uh, with a story that I was given this morning, actually. A story about two salesmen. These two salesmen were sent by their company in a remote uh, region to go and see if there is an opportunity even for them to, to sell. 
And when they went there, they realized, they, and this, this company was a company that sells shoes. But when they went to that region, they realized nobody wears shoes there. So one of the salesmen called the boss and said, actually, there's no need to send shoes here. Nobody wears shoes. But the other one said, send all the shoes that you can, because there's nobody who wears shoes here. So there's an opportunity to sell the shoes. It's all about perspective. How do you see it? You know, sometimes in church, people can see something and dismiss. It's not worth. What do you see and what do you do? Are you the one who will dismiss? Or are you the one who will be part of the solution and say, there's actually a need and there is something that I can do? I know even as a church, as I talk, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm addressing children, but I know even these children will grow into adults, and there are adults also who are disabled, and they need to be thought about. But even as I, sometimes when I talk even to the children's ministry, like Pastor Maureen, one thing she, know, she is is overwhelmed, like, oh my goodness, I don't know if we have volunteers to do that. And for us, or for me, is to encourage all of us to partner, not, let it not be that person's ministry. We all can do something. We all can offer our support even for something for, 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 our, for our church to embrace those who are weak among us. Because if she needs support for that, then we'll be calling for those among us to do that. So it's all about perspective. What do you see? And what do you do about what you see? There's this quote from Stanley I can't pronounce the second name, but it says, the church must be a place where those living with a disability and their families feel welcomed without apologizing, without being stared out, and without being silently condemned. God bless you so much, even as you think of supporting this ministry. Amen. Thank you so much, Edith, as my neighbor there said. You actually preached. <clears throat> so let's appreciate Edith. Thank you for sharing your passion with us. And uh, I pray that we may all in our hearts where the Lord has placed it for us to serve those around us that are weak. May they all be welcomed the same way we are welcomed in his presence. I'll ask that we stand up as we close our service. Thank you for coming to church today. May the Lord bless you this week as you go, wherever you go, go with Jesus and be his hands and feet to the world around us. And let us share with the words of the grace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and have a lovely week. Mm.